Hello, I'm Pamela Anjay, editor, radio, and TV host. In my profession, I've interviewed dozens of people who sometimes I thought were all happy. Some of them did the unthinkable. They took their own lives. Today's edition is dedicated to their memories and to you out there who might be struggling or know someone who needs help. Today we are blessed with a sponsor that's going to provide us just the resources that you need or that someone that you love needs to take care of their mental health. Match with a counselor and get the help you deserve with BetterHelp by clicking here at betterhelp.com slash teamtv. Thanks to BetterHelp for sponsoring this edition of the Immigrant Magazine Weekly. Hello and welcome to a very exciting edition of the Immigrant Magazine Weekly. I'm Pamela Anjai. African immigrants are known to be highly educated, very intelligent, and hardworking. What you may not know, however, is that this community of immigrants lives typically under tremendous stress, stigma, trying to figure their way and navigate just like all other immigrants. And most of the time, this is not covered on the news or anywhere else. My guest today, Mr. Knight Admasu, is the founder of the African Communities Public Health Coalition. She will help us put some perspective on the mental state of this community and how they manage to thrive in spite of everything they experience. Before we proceed, please do me the honors and subscribe if you haven't by clicking the subscribe button here below and also ringing the notification bell so that you will be notified when we bring you such amazing content. Also, do well to press the like button so that you too will share our videos. Of course, be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Pam and Jang, and also like The Immigrant Magazine on Facebook. Without further ado, let's bring on Miss Sunite at Masu. So I want to welcome Sunite to the show. Hello, Sunite. How are you doing? How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for taking your time this beautiful Sunday yeah. um, to do this. Absolutely. This is a labor of love and we have to do it. So let's get straight to it. Number one, people always want to know, you're from Ethiopia, right? Yes, I am. Okay. You're in the draft from Ethiopia. What brought you here? Brought you me to United States. United States. Um, hmm, interesting question. Well, you know, when you back home, regardless uh, whether it's a social or political issue, you always want to get what is going on in a Western, um, you know, um, you know, the dream, American dream. Um, sounds like it's really high, achievable, and also exciting. And so I was very young. I was my teenage. Um, Prior to the United States, I was in different countries as well. So it is like something to do, something to achieve, um, something to learn, but I don't regret it. I'm happy most of my time here in the United States. So uh, now I'm a mother. Um, so yeah, that's why I came. That's amazing. Everybody has that unique story, but mm -hmm. you took that, you've taken your journey and you're doing some amazing things. You are the founder of the, an organization called African Communities Public Health Coalition. So you're focusing on African immigrants. Why? Good. Um, I, as you said, it, it, um, the reason why, because um, I'm an immigrant and also I know what um, means to be an immigrant in here in a Western country, coming from different side of the world. And um, most of the time we assume we understand what's going on. We assume we just assimilation is really easy. It wasn't for me, as I said, I was in a teenager. I didn't know the education system is totally different. The culture, the norms. Um, I came from the collective of society versus here individualism that really affect and or impacted our lifestyle here who become. Unless um, otherwise we are really transit or integrated to this um, the domain culture um, uh, with the system or the help to understand what it means from cultural perspective, uh, it is difficult and that's what inspire us. I'm not the only one I have some other uh, colleagues who are also founders of this organization. So, 
when we started, it was actually uh, about um, advocating on behalf of the immigrant communities. More so, mental health issue is was really um, impacting or um, what did I say? In increasing um, among immigrant communities at that time was Ethiopian communities. So the whole point is, it was just advocating, addressing the issue. I never thought it would be organization something to uh, to work um, or provide services, and that's how we started. So just to answer your question, uh, why not? We are immigrants, so we are privileged um, to get some education and work with public sector. So I think this is something we should be paying back to our community. And meanwhile, you know, we serving a public sector, um, public sector. In other words, our community also immigrant refugees are taxi payers. Um, so why not? That's amazing because when I think of when I just came to the United States, and I'm sure you have your own experiences. Everybody has experience as an African immigrant. I do not have a place to go to get resources. Yeah. I remember that even when I had my, when I went through the period for the legal, getting myself legalized and everything, I did not know that I could get, let's say some financial help. I did not know that if I was dealing with mental trauma, emotional trauma, that it was a place I could go. And I think that that's what you're catering to. Tell us about, this, you know, what African immigrants go through that people don't know about? Well, I can relate it to my own experience, as you say. Um, so when I came to this country, the first thing I want is, um, uh, you know, American dream achiever. So it does, didn't know how. It was difficult. Uh, most of my colleagues, people I know, at least they know how to work hard and worried about the, the family back home, how they make them proud. Um, so for me, it was a challenge, although I know my capacity and um, I can do what others can do it, but we have these things, um, we look at it, I mean, we're different. It's a language barrier, there's um, low self-esteem, maybe we don't have any so social support, maybe we don't have the guidance um, to tell us what to do, what to get. And so that's the kind of thing um, that's just among other major problems and that's even coming forward, being a single mother, raising a children, um, and also um, addressing the other social issues. And those are the immigrants, it's just a common problem. So for me, um, the school experience was really difficult to go to university and to get education because some of the people have been discouraged to go to different um, major uh, they assume oh this is difficult or to go even so-called prestigious universities so those are the kind of things like now i look back hmm, interesting um some reason uh, or systemic discrimination after all we're black people uh at least for african and um immigrant uh, and african and refugees uh, immigrants and also caribbean immigrants we assume uh, or we are um, labeled as African-American, which is, as we know, there has a long history of discrimination. And so we are being marginalized in so many sectors, although we are the contributor of economic, politics, social, you name it, uh, for some reason. So especially if you're a newcomer, uh, it's really difficult to uh, navigate to the system just uh, um, get what you want. And that's one of the major problem for me experiences the school area. But um, as we see it, there is um, health and a mental health issue, a disparity. Uh, the service is not really fitted what uh, that is cultural, uh, culturally appropriate. Um, there's a language barrier. Those are just a few of the challenges we can just on and on and on. You know what's funny? You mentioned something about you know school and all those things. African immigrants are known as being highly educated, mm -hmm. innovative, um, intelligent, and all of that. But they do experience a lot of mental and emotional trauma, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. What are some of the kinds of things that your organization would deal with and how do you help them? So the organization pretty much, as I said, it was um, pretty much it advocate, advocating um, a lot, advocating we've done when we started, but uh, moving forward, we provide mental health service. Most of us are clinicians, um, most of my colleagues. So we provide mental health service. 
not only that mental health service per se, the therapy and medication, we advocate. That's what is the root cause of the mental health a problem. And that's why we do education, outreaching we do. Uh, that means um, we really encourage everyone to connect with us so we can understand the value, the norms, what we practice and what works for us and what has to be addressed in, uh, for um, other entities and the traditional way um, provide service, uh, service providers. And um, that's the kind of what we do. So we do advocating mental health service and also uh, while we're doing mental health assessment and also assessing our community, what is missing is the immigration issue. Uh, people have immigration issue. Um, they don't trust people uh, to talk to. We have women within the family. It's a taboo to talk about your immigration status. Mm -hmm. The political environment more so the last four years and even prior to that. And as you know, um, we'll come back to it actually. So those are the kind of service we provide right now is uh, mental health is a signature um, program we have. Within mental health, we have outreaching, we have education, we have therapy, uh, we have case management, which is a lot of intense case management. Case management is not just linking the sole resources, but we also have to walk with them and help them what to do and what to go and speak on behalf of our clients. And that's what we do on a daily basis. I'm, I mean, I'm glad that you're doing that, but do, uh, do the immigrants that need those services, do they really come? Because, you know, African culturally, you know, there's taboo about mental, when you talk mental, people think crazy, they think cuckoo, they don't think about the little things. So what in your experience is, needs to be addressed doesn't mean you are cuckoo or whatever. Please break it down because it's a mental health thing. People just shy away and then they don't get any help. Well, the stigma is not only immigrant refugee communities, to be honest with you. Even here in a Western society, mental health has been always a taboo and uh, stigma is there, a shame in a way. Um, but through a lot of education and science and coming with a lot of um, research and the truth, try and educate. I mean, mental health is a brain disease. It's like we do have another physical disease and diabetics and um, high blood pressure. Those are the kind of things we're worried about. And scientifically, we believe in it. We take the medication. When it comes to brain disease, uh, we have the other side of the, uh, the myth. Uh, it's just like being insane from, uh, I had to say this, from a spiritual perspective, most of us came from that background. We refer to evilness and some other, um, you know, belief and value. That's nothing wrong with that. But again, it takes a lot of efforts to educate, uh, to reduce the stigma. Not a lot of people only um, caught up with the stigma. It's just one of the things also. Trust is the main a major issue. In other words, like um, maybe the Western medicine or traditional service has not been trusted. Right. As immigrant, as you know, trust is a big issue. Whether pre and post migration trust is being impacted in our life, even where we came from, we don't trust the entity um, <laughs> because of so many reasons. Because of that, and when we have um, encounter with Western medicine or whether um, therapist or medication, we don't trust. We really don't know uh, if it is going to work for us. We really don't know that person really sincere to help us. That comes from a lot of political background of uh, trust and distrust and historically, mainly from the black community, you know, in the past, and which have another agenda with it. Because of that, uh, a lot of people will resist and reluctant to come forward to seek um, services. And so what we have developed is uh, we build, we build um, trust within a community, community leaders like you, faith-based um, organizations and social groups uh, and the other centers, we have to make sure we have to create this relationship that we represent and we have to address the issue and just empower um, creating the ownership of the community so we can speak on behalf of ourselves. That's what it takes the stigma away. Um, not because of from scientific, no scientific. Yes, there is science there. But also, what about the culture, the values we are embedded? We can't change it overnight. So that's what we did is this intense um, uh, education and building the trust. 
in terms of education, and I'm talking not necessarily about formal education, what about the people that don't have the mental trauma and how we treat those that have mental trauma? Have you, is that a factor that you have studied? Into, because sometimes, yes, there's the person that's dealing with it. What about us as a society, how we look at, what would you tell us about how we should treat people that need help to encourage them to go get help? Well, the treatment started from your family or friends, to be honest with. Um, <laughs> yeah, really, really, yeah. So you, you notice something is not right with the person, you know, who does know better than you do your own family, your own children, right? So you listen to that person. We encourage everybody to listen to each other, give a time, give it an ears. And if you find this is a little bit beyond the capacity of family and one friend, then that's why we have to seek the help. And that's why we there. We created this a thousand mental health service providers, traditional service providers. Why we African Coalition created, why we uniquely say it's a difference between. Um, I used to work for the other organization, to be honest with you. The, the job is the same thing. We have A, B, C, D, like the clinical look we have to follow. What is missing or what is why we have to create this organization because what happened to our value? What happened, the spiritual value? What happened, the way how we communicate, the way how we practice? How do we integrate those in the traditional values or treatments or call? to the traditional, the Western treatment. That's the reason we are created this organization. So when we speak this a trauma, whatever happened within the family or that certain community, we have to uh, really empower, encourage the practice what we have. It could be a spiritual church or mosque or whoever it might be, even the family gathering and the ritual. That's the kind of uh, treatment we start with listening or meet someone where they are. Mm -hmm. Whether they believe a juju or evilness or something, we have to understand, be with them to walk the walk. And that's why we are a little bit different than the traditional service. And then again, um, who do we trust? And if you come to me, do you trust me? Do you, tr you trust your pastor? And that's the kind of thing we really have to understand and listen what the person how we'll be able to treat. And we can't just say like we do assessment down, like, next thing you know, you have a trauma, you have a bipolar or PTSD, we're gonna get a medication. That doesn't work. Um, otherwise we don't have that uniqueness of our service. That's very interesting. I'm really happy to know. So please people, don't treat people like there's something wrong with them. Encourage people to go and get help. Right, so, right. What is going on? Is there anything currently in the atmosphere? Because you always talked about immigration and mental health currently in the country? Do you see uh, uh, anything that is prevalent? Because for example, the Asians are experiencing this, you know, since the coronavirus, they've been targeted. Are African yeah. immigrants dealing with anything that's really needs to be addressed right now, do you think? It is always been actually, um, we, we dealt with Ebola, you know, some people lost family, the immediate family to the point it can't even cry. Mm. It can make a phone call just to affirm the family because of this stigma, um, you know, this kind of hatred, no, no, you know, uh, what's going on here. Um, so uh, day to day, we're facing those, uh, but what we're trying to do is educate the people. We are beyond what they call you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have multiple identity. We does, it doesn't really define us, uh, the hatred that is going on. Uh, we're strong, you know, we're strong. We Africans, and um, same thing with Asians, all I say in solidarity, in solidarity, we have to stand with Asian brothers and sisters because um, there's no science, you know, proof that's what it is. It's politics and politics can play any way you, they want it. But, that doesn't identify them. That doesn't define them. What they do, what they do, who they are. Same thing with us. Um, so that hatred is going to go for. It's been a century. It will go another one or two century. Who knows? But it's us. We have to show them we're not. We say we are. Um, we have to let them know who we are, and that's what we do. in empowering ourselves and resist for this uh, xenophobia and uh, hatred and racism or discrimination, those are just American values for now. But 
we don't want to deal with them. Uh, we have to educate ourselves and we have to let the, our children uh, to be who they are, to be proud, um, not just to fall this in negativity. That's very important. You just talked about children. Children of African immigrants face a lot of stigma also. Uh -huh. How can you help them? Because they go to school, they have, they're born here, but they have these African names. And sometimes they're even embarrassed. Have you experienced that with children that don't want to associate with the parent because of the African stigma that's going on in school? I know I have had to, I've talked to parents who have experienced that. How can we help our children? Well, we, it started with the family, to be honest with, um, uh, and then it started in the family. In other words, like you have to tell them, start telling them who they are. Uh, we have a beautiful thing in Africa. We just can't not be exposed to negative media here um, in a Western to compare us to them. But the, the truth is the resource come from Africa. Africa is beautiful. We have beautiful culture, even if it was but way back in century, there's so many things we should be proud. Um, I don't have to go through the history right now, but you and I know so a lot of things came from Africa. So we have to really educate. We have to start from home. Um, just um, make sure they feel comfortable who they are, their identity. Um, so that's one thing we have to do. Um, and education is really, another thing I'll say, we have to really uh, create the belongingness to the community. Although yes, they're African Americans, they're born here, they're American, uh, but bicultural is okay. So just make sure we educate, they have some place where they identify themselves as a belongingness. In other words, like if you're Nigerian, bring them to a Nigerian community, if you come from Cameroon, you are, bring them to the community, um, show them what we eat and how we greed and all those values and customs. Uh, so they have something to be proud to identify themselves. Um, they don't have to just identify for the negative, as I say. So it started from home. One thing I'm worried about, um, you know, regardless Ethiopian, Nigerian, Cameroon, when they're born here, raised they are black young men and women. So they have to face that the discrimination some other black men and women exposed to. That's very important to educate who they are as African-American history. Uh, we're here because of what happened to the ancestor African-American. So they don't have to misbelieve that, oh, you African, you're not African-American. No, they're African-American. They're born and raised here. They identify themselves as African-American. Therefore, they must learn how we become hear who they are right now, um, have to learn the history of African American and that the sacrifice and suffrage what brought us here and also for them to be where they are. Then that would give them just identity, strength and belongingness in that's the only way I would say, uh, tell the story. They have to change the narrative that is being told African this and that. It's us, we have to teach them who they are so they can be um, who they are and proud. Wow, Samai, that is so powerful. So now what about the parents, us parents and our American children? It's sometimes so difficult, you know, navigating the culture because they go to school, they learn a different culture, they come home, we have a different culture. Even the parent is traumatized, doesn't know how to even raise a child, doesn't know how to discipline the child. There's so much going on. How do you reconcile the child, just based on what you've said about the integration of the child in the American culture and the, Af and the African immigrant parents and the relationship? Well, I would say it takes both. I mean, I would say I wouldn't just uh, blame the children. The children are the product of the environment and, and, I, and our parenthood. Um, so I think the parents, what we need to focus at this point, uh, that uh, culture change um, we came from the collective society. So we always uh, tend to validate um, our um, elderly, like parents and just make them proud. And that's our priority. That's what I came from, that's a priority. Like, how do you make proud of your family? Uh, I think it's less interested who you want it to be or um, how you would like to guide your life. It's always about your family, how the other society look at you, at least my generation that was. 
but things change, you know, my children don't have to face and they're here in America as individuals and how do, how do they just survive and within this um, society is a priority in America, you know, survive as a fetus. You have to survive in education, you have to survive economically and politically. So we really have to be able to uh, kind of balance and teach them or meet them what they are, our children. Otherwise they are pulled in two ways. Oh no, you don't say this and this is not my culture. And here's um, the other peer, they just look at them like very traditional, very, um, you know, uncivilized, whatever. They make fun, you know, the kids. So we have to meet them in the middle, but the parents, the one should be, um, uh, you know, um, address or educate yeah, that they have to understand the children's culture versus their own. Sometimes it's projecting, we impose our own interest, our children. And I've seen a lot of comment in that. Um, that's a common thing. Uh, but again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's wishing the best because I didn't have it. I want you to have it. But it's a lot of pressure for the children to put that much um, um, you know, expectation from the children who are also uh, facing so many discriminations because they black after all. Um, peer pressure, culture change, uh, even the last 20 years, culture change. Those are the kind of things. So the children, um, the safety is very important. I think we should be worried about the safety and well-being versus um, the second, the career. All that's good, but that would be a second priority. So just to summarize, I think we need to unite. You in the public eye, you in the media. We are educators. We need to educate our community from the culture perspective that we respect the value and expectation, but also make sure we understand the value of our children's value, our culture. And that's what it takes. I believe that's the best way. Um, I have seen it in my own community um, that children are going towards the negative um, way of um, escaping that pressure. Uh, a lot of children being impacted in mental health because of this issue, uh, misunderstood between the parents and the children. The expectation is just the high. Those are the kind of things we're trying to educate is just to be a mediator within the family. So we have a lot of work to do, to be honest with you. Just, you can't say like, oh, this is what it, it can't just be fixed um, for one or two things. Um, it's a lot of steps we have to take, but at least we have to start from somewhere. Should be some sort of initiative that will bring the children um, and the parents together so we can be communicate. Wow, who would have thought that we would be talking about our children and fighting with them mentally, emotionally, spiritually, trying to connect. Like you have your child, but we are in a different country, different culture. You said parent culture, children's culture, totally mm -hmm. different. And this is what most immigrant communities grapple with, but I know in the African immigrant community, it is very strong because as an African myself, I have children that were born here and sometimes we just clash you know and it's so difficult so tell us about um you know how our audience can reach you your office to get help do you do like counseling for parents and children too or is it just strictly within the you know yes I, yes we do we do a lot of counseling we do a lot of um thank god um a lot of parents come forward and that's one thing as i said it's about trusting so Right now, which we are so proud to see parents come forward and telling them the story, it just becoming more um, the safety pen. They come forward and speak with us and we really appreciate, although it's a lot of things, uh, you know, might not be able to resolve, at least we can um, just take them the process, what has to be taken. Um, yeah, so that's what we do. Do we have a family together and we have individual? Uh, we have a lot of domestic violence going on, just to let you know that during this pandemic, uh, the tension, the anxiety has been causing a lot of mental health issue within the family. Uh, we've seen a lot of substance abuse rising among men and the young people. Um, that's because of this pandemic. Uh, and also there's no one to trust. Um, for that reason, we opened five days during all this pandemic because um, we have to be there and make sure we communicate timely. We also have um, attorneys who does consultation and also 
um, resolving some family issues uh, and immigration issues. A lot of asylum, a lot of people lost the green cards, a lot of pending cases. Uh, there's a lot of things unresolved during this pandemic year and a half. Uh, so we've been working with everybody. Um, so yeah, that's what we do. We have every, everything is there. I was just trying to be one center. Uh, so a lot of work has to be done, uh, but this is not just the African coalition. You've been involved with other, a lot of community centers involved. It's a collaborative work because we are the village of our community. Uh, we're trying to create a village at least where everybody feels like belonging to this so they can come forward receiving service, whether it's case management, whether mental health, whether um, talking about something. Um, that's what we're trying to do. It's just amazing that you had this initiative to give us the leadership. So I'm really so proud and to know that we have a place to go because most communities, they have Chila, Baji, APAC you know, for Asian, Latino, they have so many, even Maldives for the Mediterranean, the, the Arabs, but mm -hmm. the African community, the African immigrants do not have, and that's why I really thought it'd be important to have this conversation with you. So I'm so glad. Please give our audience the website, how they can reach you, um, let them so they can go start getting the help they need. Yeah, let me just clear, since you mentioned some organization, let me tell you something. There's a lot of organization, there's immigration advocacy policy. Uh, those are the organization, including Baji. I had to talk to Baji because Baji is the Black Alliance for Just Immigration. They're part of us, actually, but they do a lot of nationwide um, policy advocacy. Immigration advocacy is really being difficult for as an immigrant. Do you know we are the most, um, uh, the majority deported um, communities during the, the uh, Obama, starting Obama time? We are, um, we're deported disproportional to do how many numbers of immigrants live in the United States versus you would think Latino has a major number, but it is African immigrants. Because of that, we need someone to advocate. African coalition, we do advocate, but also more so a lot of services. Baji does that. And some other Latino, of course, uh, predominantly for Latino, and we have Pacific um, Islanders as well. So we work with them, right? We work with them. We collaborate, we learn from them, we learn they learn from us. But I think we have to come forward, as you say, uh, whether with service provider or advocacy group, uh, we have to create alliances together to say enough is enough. Yeah. Um, even this time, the Biden administration, we will hope to stop that, but it's not, it's really not. We still are um, stuck in um, the border of Mexico um, it's okay, everybody's there, but again, the way they've been treated really less than human when it comes to being African refugee, and that's been a fact, and we have a lot of advocacy groups they go. Um, so some of the problem is barrier um, is language. A lot of people don't speak English there, so we, they don't have family, you know, they come two, three months, travel through the, you know, the ocean by feet, all that, and so to get here, so we need advocacy group, whether individual or group, we really appreciate that. So African Coalition trying to fit everywhere. We work with the city of Los Angeles with California Department of Social Service Immigration Services, California Mental Health Service um, Act, uh, MHSA, um, actually appointed to the cultural and linguistically appropriate subcommittee. I'm sitting about three commission. Uh, that's because we have to represent ourselves. So um, I am um, just passing this message. Those of you who are in attorneys or any social services, we really like to work with you guys and collaboratively so we can represent our communities, whether MENA has advocacy addressing the issue or physical health, even during pandemic. We need a lot of support because um, this is um, for us and so, so much common we have regardless what Part of Africa you are, like you and I, uh, it's, a, it's a call. So um, thank you, really great. We continue to addressing this issue. It's not one time, it's not um, just one set ongoing process to advocate and represent our, our communities. Seriously, Sanat, you know, you have to come back because we have not scratched the surface the way I see it. Because 
um, there's always a lot of yeah. activism, activism for the other communities, but African immigrant group has been left behind a lot. And sometimes I don't know is that we don't show up also, or we don't talk about our problems, or we're just not listening. We're gonna have to do something about it. And I'm so happy that Baji, Black Alliance for Just Immigration, African Coalition, that you guys have taken the mantle and you're doing this work. I'm really imploring everybody that's listening, please, you've heard tonight, reach out and show your support. Um, there are caravans sometimes taking place. Right. Please show your support. There are many ways you can support donations. They need financial assistance. They may need a vehicle, right? They may need a van. They may need food. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you called me because you need to place somebody from the country. Housing, you housing know. is a major issue. Yes. We're working on it, hopefully. Um, as I say, this is just a center to present what we need to provide, um, whether a service or advocacy group. Um, it could be done. Yes. And we've seen it in the last ten years of work, and we're really proud that everybody, whether volunteers or people who work with us, uh, we came a long way, long way, um, Pam, you know it. So we're really happy where we are right now, but uh, we like to um, expand the service. We like to reach out more people to come forward. Um, so I would like to take this opportunity, the people who are part of African Coalition, we just give a birth to this organization the last 10 years. Uh, now it's about to take off um, that um, we're not going back. Um, we all gonna be forward into providing services. And we are very happy to everybody to contact us for any uh, whether it's immigration issue or mental health issue, any advocacy or unfair unemployment, we do have a lot of great attorneys who's really helping us. Um, give us a call. Our number is 213-909-0985. And also the website info at africancoalition.org. African Coalition is one word. Um, so you can reach us. I would be very happy to hear from you. And if you didn't catch what she said, you can even email me at public.immigrantcoalition.com yeah. and I will direct you. So info at africancoalition.org, correct? Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Listen, you have to come back. We have to touch different topics. Different right. Topics. Yeah. This is critical. Thank you so much tonight and good luck with everything you're doing. And remember, you have a partner in us. So let's do this. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the immigrant medicine. Actually, you guys have been really awesome. You're everywhere, Paul. Don't underestimate your power. Really. You've been a voice. Uh, you've been telling us what's going on. And we really also empower you, support your effort. And that's what it takes, you know. We really have to come back regardless. The effort, the effort is what it matters, the initiative. What do we take what we start? Um, that's what everybody should be, um, acknowledge a little effort uh, anyone's doing. Because uh, otherwise, we're gonna be forgotten. <laughs> Thank you. You have a great for rest of the day. Uh, we'll connect soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed our episode of the Immigrant Magazine Weekly. Don't forget to get help or recommend our sponsor today, BetterHelp, for anyone that is struggling with mental health. Match with a counselor and get the help you deserve with BetterHelp at betterhelp.com forward slash team TV. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this very important episode of the Immigrant Magazine Weekly. We've come to the end of our show. Thank you so very much for joining me today. I would love to hear what you think about our discussion. So please share your thoughts in our comment section or send me an email to publisher at immigrantmagazine.com. Now be sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Pam and Chang and like us on Facebook, The Immigrant Magazine. See you next time on The Immigrant Magazine Weekly.